Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The idea of airdrops has existed for many decades. Initial airdrops were carried out by manually pushing small crates fitted with parachutes out through the side cargo door of an aircraft. Over time, freighters were developed with rear access ramps that could be lowered during flight, along with specialized floors fitted with metal rollers, enabling the smooth release of heavy equipment. The U.S. Air Force and Army operate several transport aircraft within their fleets. However, the most well-known workhorse is the C-17 Globemaster, which is capable of transporting 170,000 pounds of cargo. Using the C-17, the U.S. military performs airdrop missions that include releasing tanks and Humvees from altitudes of up to 5,000 feet. Humvees are driven into the cargo bay through the rear ramp and fastened using attachment points on the floor, which prevent them from shifting and damaging other equipment during takeoff or flight. Once the Humvees are properly positioned, the cargo door remains closed until the aircraft reaches the designated drop zone. Prior to airdropping the Humvees, the aircrew secures the vehicles onto heavy-duty pallets using tension cables. Each pallet is fitted with a parachute to ensure the supplies reach the ground safely. As the aircraft approaches the drop location, the C-17 lowers its rear cargo door and the Humvees are released. When they reach the edge of the rear ramp, parachute cords connected to a line inside the cargo bay are pulled free causing the parachute to deploy immediately as the pallet enters the air. The pilot maintains a specific speed and altitude to ensure the pallets are not dropped into an undesirable or potentially hazardous area. Loadmasters also conduct offload training, which demands precise planning, coordination, and communication among aircrew members. The loadmasters secure the cargo container tightly with chains and slide it toward the rear ramp. The aircraft lowers the ramp, and the cargo container is positioned onto the back of a flatbed truck that transports it to the required location. The team must operate together in perfect synchronization to complete this task successfully. Even a small error can damage surrounding equipment worth millions of dollars. The concept of airdrops is also applied to deliver emergency flood relief aid. In regions such as South Sudan's Maban County, 
Food supplies are normally transported using barges and trucks. However, during the rainy season, road access to Mobin County becomes impossible, which is why the only viable way to deliver sufficient food to refugees is by air. At least one month's worth of food supplies is airdropped into the affected areas, allowing barges and trucks additional time to transport food into Mabon County. Refugees collect the food supplies from the ground and carry them back to their homes. Airdrops can further support search and rescue missions at sea. Zodiac Milpro, an inflatable boat, is packed into a waterproof bow bag, transported by helicopter, and airdropped directly into the water, where military personnel retrieve it to conduct low-profile operations. It gives the military the ability to conceal their boat underwater during night or day infiltration phases and to reinflate it after the mission for exfiltration. This raft is also employed in search and rescue missions and assists in recovering victims under any conditions. The Humvee, short for High Mobility Multipurpose Wheeled Vehicle, has long been a key element of the U.S. military's ground transportation fleet. However, operating on the front lines also exposes these vehicles to significant damage. At the Humvee Recapitalization Production Facility at Texas's Red River Army Depot, experienced repair technicians work to restore older vehicles to like new condition, ensuring they remain functional and effective for military service. In fact, the facility is capable of producing up to 40 fully refurbished Humvees each day. Naturally, refurbishing existing vehicles costs far less than building new ones from the ground up, making the RRAD an essential part of the military's cost reduction efforts. Yet, it is not the only facility performing this role. Letterkenny Army Depot in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, focuses on the repair, refurbishment, and upgrade of a broad range of military equipment. At any given moment, the lead team may be inspecting and rebuilding anything from tactical vehicles to missile systems to ground support equipment. One of its most valuable tools is the Blue Light Optical Scanner, which enables detailed inspection of components and easily identifies defects, wear, and potential dimensional inaccuracies. In 1961, the U.S. Air Force began searching for a manufacturer to design and build the heaviest cargo aircraft ever produced at the time. 
By 1968, the first flight of the Lockheed C-5 Galaxy took place, intended to replace the Douglas C-133 Cargo Master and complement the Lockheed C-141 Starlifter. The C-5 Galaxy was constructed with both forward and aft cargo doors. Due to the aircraft's massive size, it was engineered to lower its cargo hold, or kneel, making it 28.5 inches closer to the ground than during taxi operations. The C-5M Super Galaxy, an upgraded version of the original C-5, can carry approximately 281,000 pounds of cargo. For comparison, this payload may include two M1 Abrams tanks, six standard city buses, or three Chinook helicopters within its cargo hold. Remarkably, the C-5M's cargo hold is one foot longer than the first flight conducted by the Wright brothers in 1903, which measured 120 feet. Within the U.S. Army, the M-09 A6 Paladin is the heaviest self-propelled howitzer, weighing 60,627 pounds. These armored vehicles were designed so the crew can easily operate its 155mm gun from inside its spacious turret. Before loading two of them onto a C-5, the crew prepares the ramp to prevent damage from the tracks. The loadmaster then briefs the driver, while ground troops assist by guiding the vehicle during loading. At this stage, the aircraft is positioned in its knelt configuration, simplifying the loading process. Even though the Paladins are large, the M1A2 Abrams remains the heaviest vehicle in the U.S. Army at roughly 140,000 pounds each. The C5M is capable of carrying two of them. The JLTV, Joint Light Tactical Vehicle, is an armored platform designed to replace the Humvee within the U.S. Army. Although lighter than the Abrams, it still weighs a substantial 22,500 pounds. After both vehicles are loaded, they are secured using tie-down chains, as any shift in the center of gravity could have catastrophic consequences. AH-64 Apache attack helicopters are a vital asset of the U.S. Army and are involved in nearly every conflict. The C-5M can transport up to six of these helicopters at once. Prior to loading, the Apaches are configured to occupy less space by folding their rotors inward. Once the rotors are folded, the helicopters become significantly easier to load, especially with assistance from one of the two cargo winches located inside the Super Galaxy's hold. When the loadmasters are satisfied, they notify the pilot. Mm -hmm. 
Many people are unaware that even a C-130 Hercules can fit inside the enormous cargo hold of a C-5. In 2008, the Rhode Island Air Guard donated a C-130 to the New York Air Guard for training purposes. After removing its wings, tail, and rear horizontal stabilizers, the C-130A was able to fit inside the C-5's cargo hold. What could have become a major logistical challenge was simplified thanks to the capabilities of the C-5. Airdrop and heavy airlift missions demonstrate one of the most vital capabilities of modern military aviation. The power to transport personnel, vehicles, and life-saving supplies anywhere across the globe, often with little notice and under demanding conditions. From precise airdrops of vehicles and humanitarian aid to the careful loading of armored vehicles, helicopters, and even entire aircraft, each mission relies on detailed planning, highly skilled loadmasters, and seamless coordination between air crews and ground teams. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.